sitting in Somerset, you get used to that, the sight and sound of helicopters overhead. Indeed, helicopters, the ones built here at the Westlands factory in Yeovil, have played a big part in much of my adult life. First as a Royal Marine and then as a member of the Special Boat Service when many of the things we did depended on Westland helicopters and their brilliant pilots. The film, this film, made by a group of Yeovil College students, tells the story of one particular milestone, one major standout moment, if you like, in the hundred year history of Westland, when the company proved beyond all doubt its capability for designing and producing the best helicopters in the world. It's a calm summer's evening in August 1986. A Lynx helicopter built by Westland of Yeovil flies across the Somerset levels faster than any other in history. Uh, Roger, uh, confirm all uh, video recorders running and standing by for countdown. Uh, Bravo, this is Alpha, stand by for the countdown. 200 knots, stand by. Coming up to the start gate. Three, two, it's a defining moment for one dedicated group of engineers and pilots who've worked, largely in secret, to build and prepare an aircraft capable of taking them into the record books. Uh, Bravo, clock running. Half a clock running. For the world speed record, two passes are required, one in each direction, over a 15-kilometer straight-line course. On the day I was sitting in this seat and uh, there was a number of measurements to take, equipment to run, water methanol, we had to uh, monitor as well. Um, the engines are always very interesting in having to look after those and uh, monitor that. Trevor was of course doing the flying in the other seat. And uh, throughout the whole of this it wasn't just a speed record, it was actually a technical trial as well. To claim a new world speed record, the Westland team must be 368 kilometers per hour, which was set in September 1978. To get there, the company's G-Lynx demonstrator was fitted with experimental rotor blades, which were developed at the company's Yeovil headquarters. Chris Holliday was a key member of the blade design team. The blade that was used on the speed record was part of the British experimental rotor program, the BERT program, which was a MOD Westland jointly funded research program. The distinctive shape of the blade uh, provided 30% more thrust. When we were doing the speed record, the tip of this blade was almost at the speed of sound. So it was creating a lot of drag at that particular speed and the, the tip suppressed that. The blade is also made from composite material which was essential to allow this uh, blade to be of its distinctive shape and also to achieve the high strength that were required for, for such a blade. The aircraft has been laid up prior to this for about two and a half years and was completely stripped. Um, we've had 10 weeks to get her to the condition you see her now. Um, a lot of people have put a lot of effort in, uh, especially the guys working now, they've been working all hours. G-Lynx, I mean, I, I, I took G-Lynx off the line. Uh, she was built down in what we call Bottom XP, the build shop. And it was built as a company demonstrator. And I took her off the line, and I think you'll find. I was the only flight inspector and crew chief ever to sign up for flight. She was mine all the way through. Don Barrington remembers events leading up to the record attempt in 1986. As Westland's managing director at the time, he'd been at the eye of a political storm just months before that had taken the company to the brink of collapse. Michael Heseltine resigns and attacks Mrs. Thatcher. I have resigned from the cabinet and I will make a full statement later today. He says Mrs. Thatcher muzzled her ministers over Westland. Had this come to the senior management's notice at a very early stage, it would probably have been squashed. I mean, the last thing the company wanted was some sort of boy's own adventure with no guarantee on the outcome and undoubtedly costing money that we didn't have. He was quite cagey about it. I mean, he told us that it was going to happen. Um, but he said we mustn't say anything because they wanted to keep it a bit hush-hush. <laughs> 
It looks pretty impressive. Yeah, so we'll so, yeah, if we can't take five seconds off that time, I'll be more bloody. Call record is ready. Okay. Good luck, Trevor. On the ground, a line of red flares marked the 15-kilometer course, held aloft by a team of volunteers, among them Ian Pavey, returning now to the field in sight of Glastonbury Tour, where he had stood that hazy August evening. It was, the visibility was very, very poor and closing, and I, we, I brought some flares, so I p picked up a couple of them and came over to this bridge, and stood on the bridge, and I could see the aircraft coming by the flare. As soon as it was close enough that I knew we'd be able to see the, the smoke, I pulled the, the flare. And that's how it worked. And Derek got the glory, but the, it was a big team effort. Had it been a gin clear, wall to wall sunshine day, you wouldn't have needed a flare. But you'd still needed me. <laughs> If you could relax at all, one of the surprises was that the aircraft was so smooth and so good at that speed. Because you normally expect it to be shaking rather a lot, but it wasn't actually like that at all. It was quite a good ride. Passing through the gate. Three, two, one. Really exciting moment. It does look as if we uh, have achieved speeds which are substantially greater than those of the present uh, record holder. Congratulations. Ah, okay. Davy, thanks very much indeed. I will all see you back at base. We sat waiting for the phone call and finally, sometime after 10 o'clock, my dad just rang up and said, hello, it's me, we've done it. Absolutely great. Obviously, it's been a lot of hard work from everybody's point of view. The aircraft's behaved marvellously. And also, after all the, the um, aggro that we've had over the last 18 months or so in the press, it helps to boost our own workforce morale. As an engineer, it's very exciting to have achieved this particular record, but as managing director of the helicopter division, much more important is that the, it represents technology which uh, will, in fact, improve the capability of our product and hence enable our, us to sell our products better the whole world over. We were a world beater, and suddenly overnight, the whole atmosphere uh, in the company and the attitude to the company absolutely changed. It took just 10 weeks to turn Westland's company demonstrator, the G-Lynx, into a world record breaker and, in doing so, help secure the company's future. Today, Augusta Westland's revolutionary BERP rotor blades remain at the very leading edge of aviation excellence, designed in Somerset and recognized as amongst the best in the world. Everyone loves speed, everyone loves a record, but a world speed record, wow, that's really something yet again. I don't think any of us expected it to last that long. We all thought that sooner or later the Americans had have a go at it, or the Russians. We were relying on the skill and the courage of Trevor and also Derek Clues. They, at the end of the day, had to put it all into practice. And how well they did it.